Hi, I'm Mrs. Reese, and I'm reading Chapter 7, Fright Night. Abby entered first, plopped down on her bed as usual, and sighed a big sigh. That was fun, she said, especially when the baby spit up in the restroom. I don't think she was actually talking to me, but I listened anyway. A second later, Miranda came in. Hi, Humphrey. Did you miss me? She asked, bending down close to my cage. Of course, I squeaked. I suppose you understood what he's saying, Abby said sourly. Sort of, said Miranda. I think he's trying to tell me he missed me. Bingo! I watched Abby closely as she reached for her diary and pen. Where's my pen, she asked. She looked at her pillow. What's this stuff doing here? Miranda pointed at Abby's bed. Hey, that's my hair scrunchie. So that's what the hair thing is called. And my ring. Miranda jumped up, crossed over the imaginary line, and grabbed her things. You took them. Abby spotted something on Miranda's pillow. There's my pen. You took it. And my name bracelet. She snatched her items and glared at Miranda. You're always taking my things. You took my things. I never touched yours, Miranda insisted. I never heard her sound that angry before. Abby's face turned red. Why would I take your dinky ring and your stupid scrunchie? I have my own ring and my own scrunchie. Why would I take your dumb pen and a bracelet with your name on it? And why would I put them on my pillow where you can see them? Asked Miranda. Just to be mean. I'm not mean, said Miranda. Anyway, isn't it weird that my things were on your pillow and your things were on my pillow? Abby thought for a moment. Like somebody planned it. Like somebody wanted us to notice, agreed Miranda. Suddenly, they were actually talking instead of arguing. I crossed my paws. This had worked. Abby sat back down on her bed. Who would do that? My mom wouldn't, or your dad. Miranda collapsed onto her bed. Well, the baby didn't do it, she started to giggle. Maybe Humphrey did it, said Abby, and she started to giggle. I chuckled, too. Those things didn't fly from bed to bed, said Miranda. Somebody put them there on purpose. Or something, said Abby, like a, a ghost. Miranda turned pale. You don't have ghosts here, do you? No, said Abby, shaking her head. At least I don't think so. There are no such things as ghosts, insisted ins insisted sensible Miranda. She sounded like she was trying to convince herself. No, 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 there aren't any ghosts, except in stories, I squeaked. I know, I was trying to convince myself. I know, said Abby. She opened her diary and tore out a page. I'll write down every possibility of who could have done this. Number one, Miranda. I did it, Miranda protested. I'm just writing down all the possibilities, Miranda. Miranda, me, my mom, your dad, Ben, Humphrey. They're the only ones in the house, right? Unless there was a burglar. The fur on my back stood straight up. Burglars are scary things. Burglars break windows and steal things. Miranda pointed out the doors were locked the windows were locked, and nothing was stolen. I'm writing all this down. Burglar, ghost. Abby quietly stared at the paper for a moment. Would you swear you didn't do it? Of course, said Miranda. And I'd swear I didn't do it. <clears throat> hey, wait a second. Maybe it was Humphrey. Abby jumped up and walked over to my cage. She bent down and checked the door. Nope, it couldn't be him because his door is locked. 
Thank goodness that old lock that doesn't lock fools them every time. The only thing on the list that makes sense is a ghost, she announced. But it doesn't make sense, said Miranda. I know, Abby agreed. The girls actually agreed on something. This was progress. They'd gone from not liking each other to being really, really, really mad to talking things over. After a while, the girls left the room to have dinner. This time, they left together. When they came back much later, they were still together. Dad said it didn't make sense, Miranda was saying. And Mom agreed, Abby replied. What now? The girls flopped down on their respective beds. I know, said Abby. Let's stay up all night. Why? To see if any ghosts show up. I felt a chill creep down my spine. I knew I was the one who moved their things around, and I knew I wasn't a ghost. But I still got a shiver thinking about something scary, scary, scary just might show up. Lights out, ladies, Mr. Golden stood at the door later that night, smiling. Hope you have sweet dreams. You too, Humphrey. Thanks, I squeaked back. Everybody all tucked in? Amy appeared at the door, holding baby Ben. Yes, Mom, Abby snuggled down in her bed and pulled up the covers. Good night, said Miranda, pulling up her blankets as well. The lights went out, and it was dark, dark, dark in the room, except for the night light in the wall, which gave off a pink glow. The girls were quiet for a few minutes. Then Abby whispered, Are you awake? Yes, Miranda whispered back. Know any scary stories? asked Abby. I certainly knew a few, like about the time Clem, the dog, almost ate me. By the time Aldo first came in the room at night, and I thought he was a ghost. Miranda thought for a minute and said, I remember one from camp. Tell it, said Abby, but not too loud. Miranda, sweet golden Miranda, told a fur-raising tale about a hitchhiker who turned out to be a ghost. The way she told it was scarier than facing Clem. <clears throat> that was a good one, said Abby. I know one, too. Her story was even worse. It was about a group of kids who dared each other to go into a graveyard at night. One girl went in, saw a horrible face, and died of fright. Recalling Og's gruesome grin, I felt faint after that story. Abby, Miranda whispered. Maybe we shouldn't tell any more scary stories. I'm feeling kind of weird. Me too, said Abby. Let's be quiet. It was quiet, all right. Maybe a little too quiet for a nocturnal fellow like me. Without thinking, I hopped on my wheel for some exercise. I guess that wheel needs oil because it went screech. When the wheel screeched, both girls screamed, Eee! By the little pink light, I could see them leap from their beds and wrap their arms around each other. The door abruptly swung open and the big light came on. Eee! The girls screamed again. It's just me, said Mr. Golden, rushing in. What's going on? He must have been as surprised as I was to see Miranda and Abby hugging one another for dear life. There was this terrible noise, said Abby. Horrible, said Miranda. That was my cue to hop back on the wheel. Screech! All eyes were on me. You mean that noise, said Miranda's dad, pointing to my cage. That's the one, I squeaked. Both girls started giggling. It was Humphrey, said Miranda. I thought it was a ghost, said Abby. Mr. Golden laughed, too. I think that ghost is pretty harmless, he said. Now, do you think you two, or you three, can get some sleep? They agreed, and he took the girls into their beds. It's good to hear you two laughing, but no more screaming, okay? 
he said as he turned out the lights. The girls were quiet for a while longer, and I stayed away from the wheel. I heard Abby whisper, Miranda, could you sleep over here with me just for tonight? I was going to ask you the same thing, said Miranda. Miranda crawled into bed with Abby. Did you ever hear the story about the ghost in the attic? Abby whispered. Tell it, Miranda said. And she did. I couldn't have slept that night, even if I wasn't nocturnal. On Sunday morning, neither girl mentioned how the ring and the bracelet, the pen and the hair scrunchie, all got moved. Neither girl mentioned an imaginary line either. They did their homework at the desk, braided each other's hair, and made a maze for me to run. And when they said goodbye on Monday morning, Miranda said, See you in two weeks. Abby said, Great.